HTTP2. What is HTTP2? HTTP2, originally called HTTP 2.0, is a major revision of the HTTP network protocol. It was derived from the earlier experimental Speedy protocol, originally developed by Google. It was introduced on May 14, 2015. It is now supported by over 96% of web browsers and by 47% of the top 10 million websites. Its proposed successor is HTTP 3, a major revision built on the concepts established in HTTP 2. However, as of July 2020, it is not default on any major browser. So how is it similar to HTTP 1.1? All the high-level semantics are similar to HTTP 1.1, such as methods, status codes, headers, and URIs. Everything you learned before in my videos, it's the same. For users, aside from new features introduced in HTTP 2, there is no visible difference. However, due to internal changes in the structuring of HTTP responses and requests, HTTP 2 is not backwards compatible with HTTP 1.1. So how is it different and what features do we add? So we have pipelining of requests, server push, and data compression of headers, along with more. So before we get this, let's cover some basic terminology. So HTTP 2 does not transfer raw ASCII, instead it uses a binary framing protocol. So we have a stream, which is a bidirectional flow of bytes within an established connection which may contain one or more messages. So a message is a sequence of frames that map to a logical request or response message. Meanwhile, a frame is the smallest unit of communication in HTTP 2, each containing a frame header, which indicates the stream that the frame belongs to. So here's an example of the binary frame that we see HTTP 1.1 versus HTTP 2.0. We see here that we have a stream, and then we also have the different frames comprising of the message. So what is pipelining of requests? So arguably the most important optimization of HTTP 2 is the ability to pipeline requests and responses using multiplexing. Unlike HTTP 1.1, you can send multiple concurrent requests in HTTP 2 and they can be sent in non-FIFO order, which means that if you send a request, it doesn't necessarily have to be the first one to come back, and later reassembled at the destination accordingly. So here's an example if you want to pause the video about the different types of requests and multiplexing and pipelining. But the main idea is that this prevents head of line blocking where if the first request you do, even though you can pipeline in HTTP 1.1, which you should note is actually fairly rare if you read about it, you will notice that if the first request is blocking, for some reason you can't find the resource, it'll actually block all the subsequent requests. That is no longer the case with multiplexing. So we eliminate the head of line blocking problem found in HTTP 1.1, we reduce the latency by allowing for pipelining, which was often not performed in HTTP 1.1, and it also eliminates the need for other optimizations formerly used, such as request sharding across domains. This yields better TCP usage. Before, we found that web browsers often restricted the number of TCP connections to around 5 to 6 to a specific origin. So in order to bypass this, some websites actually perform domain sharding, where you would do an HTTP connection to separate domains, which results in extra DNS requests. So extra DNS records to resolve, and this is just overall increases the latency of your website. None of this anymore. And TCP connection usage, if you're familiar with TCP, may have slow start, so this improves the connection even more. So server push. The main idea behind HTTP2 server push is that the server may have insight into payloads that will be subsequently requested by the client. So if I have a web page index.html which contains references to a JavaScript and CSS style sheet, it's likely that the browser will then perform another subsequent request, asking for that JavaScript and that CSS style sheet. So why not just send as part of the request? We see this sim simple example here. Without push in HTTP 1.1, we could either pipeline the requests or we could just send it directly with push, and this reduces the amount of latency. So when the server determines that a resource can be server pushed, it will include a push promise frame, indicating that it will include it as part of the resource. The client can then choose to refuse it, in which case they'd use an RST underscore stream frame to indicate that I do not want to push. So for example, if the resource is already in cache. But in the previous example, I, you could have just simply inlined the CSS and JavaScript in the original HTML file. Technically, we've already had this capability, but now by using RST stream, we can natively toggle this capability on or off. So data compression of headers. I'll have a separate video more specifically about this. But in HTTP 1.1, headers are not compressed, while in HTTP 2, they tend to use the HPAC compression format. That actually has a separate specification. So here we avoid keeping track of or sending any headers that were previously sent before. The server and client will maintain state. Some additional enhancements include stream prioritization, where you can pick particular streams that have a priority, which means they may be sent over some other streams. Flow control is similar to TCP. And as a consequence of multiplexing, one persistent connection per origin leading to TCP connection benefits. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. And leave a comment down below. And subscribe to new videos every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern.